Greetings Flame Contributor. Today we'll be learning to add new coin finds and new coin groups. As you can see, you'll begin from the home screen where you'll be greeted by a number of different menus. For the moment, we don't need to worry about those. The circulation portion of the Flame database requires both kinds of data, that is, coin finds and coin groups, to create maps and to populate our system. Learning to input both is the topic of today's tutorial. However, before learning to add coin finds and coin groups, we do need to take a minute to discuss what those actually are. This diagram shows the relationship between coin finds and their subcategory coin groups. Each coin find represents a hoard or excavation find and receives data on geographic location, find date, total coin numbers, and so forth. Within each coin find, there may be one or more coin groups that are distinguished by denomination, associated mint, date ranges, and so on. Consider the following scenario. I have in my pocket a certain amount of Canadian coinage, and altogether we can count this as a hoard. Within this hoard, there are several different kinds of coins. If we assume that the year of minting is the same for each, then all we need to worry about are the various denominations. There are the loonies, there is a single toonie, there are our quarters, nickels, a dime, and one more quarter. Once we've identified these, then we have the various groupings that together make up the coin find. So now that we've covered what coin finds and coin groups are in theory, let's take a look and see how we can add them to the database. From our menu screen, we wish to click on the coin finds button at the upper left part of the screen. Then we enter the coin finds menu, which provides a list of coin finds that you have entered. Here we find basic information about each entry and are provided with buttons that allow us to access other pages. This includes an option to edit the existing coin find information or to open it up and to see its associated coin groups. To add a new coin find, click the button in the upper left. This brings us to a new menu that includes a number of fields that we need to fill out in order to create the new coin find. That includes the name of the coin find, and in this case, why don't we call it Test Coin Find 2. From there, we need to enter the coin's location. Luckily, our fields have a number of tools that allow us to do this automatically. One is through the website pleiades.stoa.org. Here, we can search for the place that we want, and if it's in the system, it will provide us with a Pleiades number that we can enter into the system automatically. Here, we try to find Athens. Once we do, we're able to get the Pleiades number from the last six digits of the hyperlink. And from there, we're able to go back to the menu and input them into the field. Once we do and click away, all of the fields will fill in automatically. In this way, we ensure standardization among the various geotags that we put into the system. If the location is not listed in Pleiades, we need to go elsewhere to find the geographic data that we need. One of the examples is provided in the menu itself. And here you can see we look for another location, not Athens, but rather Sparta. And we found it. From here, we can grab the latitude, copy and paste it out. And now we replace it into the latitude field. And the same procedure is repeated with longitude as well. Once we've done that, we can put in a custom place name, and this will often correspond to the ancient name of the place. And after that, we can mark down how certain we are of the find spot. The instructions are in the field. They're relatively straightforward. Once we've done that, we mark down whether the find was a hoard, an excavation, or a single find. At this point, we name the excavation or the hoard, and we'll want to date it. In the case of hoards, which are found at a single time and place, they receive the same year in both fields. In the case of excavations, this would not be the case, as they may last for more than one year. In the following fields, we indicate the start year and end year, that is, the earliest possible date associated with the coins in the find, and the latest, in this case, let's say 300 BC and 1000 CE. There may be a considerable range of dates on either side of this. Please indicate this by checking the vague box. 
In the following field, please indicate the number of coins that are associated with the find. And within that group, which of the numbers are actually within the chronological range of this project? This will take the form of a number range. The publication reference field indicates where the information for this find came from. We ask that you write this down in Chicago style. All that remains after that is to write down some comments, either for the public in the case of the comments field, or for your fellow Flame contributors in the internal comment field. We are still working on implementing a tag system, so for now we won't cover that. And once we're happy with the results, we can hit save, which returns us to the coin find screen. Here we see that a new coin find has been added to the collection. Should we wish to edit it, that can be done by clicking on the edit button. In the meantime, in order to add coin groups, we click on the coin groups button. And as with coin finds, we are greeted with an empty screen. All we have to do is add new coin groups. This opens a screen similar to the one that you saw before, and we begin by filling in the number of coins in that coin group. In this case, let's say 25. We then open the Mint drop-down menu. Let's try Constantinople. Then we can open the Denomination menu, and let's try Solidity there. All throughout, we use standardized input in order to keep our data consistent. From there, you can choose the ruler that the coin was issued under. Let's try Constantine the first. The fields fill out automatically, but if you have a more exact date range, you can fill it in manually. Most contributors will be able to ignore the following field, which really has to do with certain Islamic states and certain Northwestern European states. By and large, you can ignore this unless otherwise specified. In some cases, we are not able to identify the mint that the coin was issued from. In the cases where we cannot even identify the region from which those coins issued, in those cases, you should select the appropriate unknown field, either with the appropriate region or simply unknown, and then you should click the unknown mint area. As before, comment fields are available to contributors, either public facing comments or internal comments that are meant for Flame members only. There's one final complicating category of coinage and these are imitation coins. In this case, the important point is that the information above is meant to be when the coin is actually imprinted, under whose rule and in what years, so let's choose Clovis the fourth in this case. Continuing on with the Solidus of Constantine the first, this is what the coin imitation is meant to look like rather than when it is minted, and those are the coin dates that you would record below. As before, we record date ranges on either side that are greater than 10 years in length. We also have a system of tags that will be implemented, but are not covered in this introduction. Once we think we've recorded everything accurately, we hit save and return to the coin group screen. From there you're set. New coin groups can be edited or deleted using the buttons on the right.